Today I'm talking with my brother Paul. We have some very exciting news. We finally have, Paul's finally finished this wonderful CD of Daddy's music, of our father's music. And so we're going to tell you a little bit about it. And if you're interested in purchasing it, I've got a, a friendly bee around my head there. We'll put the link down below. It'll be available for purchase in my Etsy shop. But first, I just want, want Paul to talk about it. It's been a real labor of love. And I'm so glad Paul did this for... Um, for Pat, for his music, for you know our father, but for our family, because none of us would have been able to do it. So uh, we really are thankful that Paul took the time and the energy to put all this together. And he's actually been working on it since Pat passed away, 2016. Mm -hmm. So what was your, I mean, your first inkling of you wanted to do this, just to make sure he wrote, our father Pat, he wrote so many gospel songs. How many? I should have looked that up. Yeah. I, right at, maybe right at 60, I believe. Yeah, so a lot. And I know most of them. Yeah, so I know for an effort to get those out to the world, and what else? What made you want to do this? Mm -hmm. Well, first thing I'll say, for in case people don't know, this is what I look like when I'm excited. <laughs> this <laughs> yeah. Is, this is my excited face and excited demeanor. Yeah. You've got a bee and I've got a granddaddy. Yeah. He's I'm, not I'm trying as, to keep my eye on that granddaddy. Not as animated as I am, probably. Uh, yeah, neither one of us are all that. No. But you are more animated than yeah. I am. Um, Pap and I made, and it says this same thing, I believe, at the beginning of the little liner notes, but Pap and I made a, a CD of his muse some of his music that came out in february of 2006 16 and uh, that was kind of done and we were both real real pleased with that and he would sit in his buick car which had a really good sound system had eight speakers mm -hmm. he would sit in there because at that point his health wasn't too good and he couldn't you know go out and work like he would like to he'd sit in there and listen to that over and over and of course even before it was finished he would sit in there and listen to uh, mix different mixes that that we'd worked on so it wasn't like i was planning to we just finished that one so it wasn't like i was planning to just start on a brand new one but he had a couple of songs that he had finished fairly well one he had finished fairly uh around that time recently it was uh we called it the universe song and uh looking out toward heaven but it's actually uh, heaven's brightest glory and we really wanted to hear what that sounded like back. And so we recorded it um, probably in about March. And then there was another song that I was, every now and then I would just kind of get a song on my mind and I would like want to play around with it and work on it and hear what it sounded like. So we recorded that one. And then uh, one that he had written probably in the late 60s or so, Let Me Live For God. So we recorded that one like right before or right at the beginning of my spring break and then i went off to texas to spend most of the better part of a week on my spring break with my my nephew ben and then the uh the evening i came back came well i came back monday morning at probably like five in the morning and i didn't go to work fully and i i talked to him that evening and then he passed the next morning mm -hmm. And so I was thankful that I had those two. I had to do a lot of work on them, but they're on this album. Uh, but to answer your question, I just wanted to... It was the same motivation as the other one. I wanted people to hear these songs. And I wanted to try to do the songs justice because Daddy and Ray sang for probably 40 years. You know, and they made seven or eight albums. And they put some of his original songs on those albums. Usually the albums would be about... 40% his stuff and 60% covers, but when they went out, they always sang covers for the most part. So not many people really had ever heard these songs, and they did that because that's so much easier mm -hmm. to do a song you've already heard somebody else yeah, do. Yeah, they've done and figured it out for you. Yeah, and of course some of the songs on this CD have never been heard by anybody, hardly, other than me. Um, so that's what I was trying to do, is do the songs justice and get them out there where people could hear them, because think they're good songs. Mm -hmm. So Ray that Paul mentioned, that was Daddy's brother and they, the Wilson brothers, and you can find a lot of their music. Again, we can leave some of those links down below. If you're a fan of the Blind Pig and the Acorn YouTube channel, then you already already know about them. But we can, we'll leave that link down below. 
So it really was a labor of love. And you think, mm -hmm. well, why did it take Paul so long? For one thing, he has a very, very busy job. And the other thing is, he did it all. It wasn't like he just said, you know, I've got a band and let's go into the studio and do it all. He played, I think, most of the music, not all of it, but most of it. There's some guest musicians yeah. on there, and only one of them did I play with in person. The rest of them were all over the world. Uh, Greece, Serbia, uh, other places. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember yeah. right now, but that was a lot of fun. Having them and and no one ever, uh, no one ever turned me down. I had w one group that never responded to me, and that was about show shofar music. Mm -hmm. And so I did have to play the shofar myself. Uh, I had some that responded to me, and they they played what I asked them to play, and they did really well. It just didn't work because a lot of times I was trying to imagine what a certain instrument would sound like, and. Um, most of the time, I, uh, my instinct was right. Like, yeah, that'll really suit that song. That'll add to that song. There was a couple of times that it didn't work out and I didn't use that. But mm. um, as far as me doing it all myself, that's probably the only way it could work out because I, 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 would just, I wouldn't have any planned schedule of when I was going to work on it. Mm -hmm. It'd just be a weekend here, a weekend there, holidays, lots of holiday breaks. Uh, that's the way Dad and I recorded a lot of times would be I was on Christmas break or I was yeah. on spring break or yeah. stuff like that. Um, and Paul did all the recording too. He mm -hmm. has a rec recording equipment so he did all that so then that played into it too. It wasn't a professional somewhere where that was their, I think Paul's quality is professional but he wasn't able to just devote eight hours a day to mixing a song. He had to again do it whenever he could do it. I love so many parts about it that I love, but the fact that Paul got all those different people to play from all those places, which is the amazing modern world we live in, that he was able mm -hmm. to do that. But that would be, I could just see Daddy. Daddy, he'd be just like, what? <laughs> yeah. You got somebody in Greece to play yeah. on my song, and it sounds that good, and then you put yeah. it with your stuff, you know? So that would that would definitely he would be really tickled. tickle. He would be tickled by that. Yeah. but. Uh, I feel like, and, and, and sometimes people would agree and then they wouldn't comment that much on the songs, but other times they would say, wow, that's, you know, that's a great song. Um, yeah, so that was always good. Somebody from a totally different culture who plays a totally different kind of music mm -hmm. instead of just thinking, wow, well, listen to this hillbilly music, you know, to hear them say, that's, that's a really good song. Right. Uh, most of them probably uh, were, are Christians. Uh, I'd say probably a, a few of them were not, uh, but st still they, they liked the song. Mm -hmm. I want to back up to something you said. It's just a thought that has gone through my mind a few times. And you said it's a labor of love. Um, one thing that I should have done better about is ultimately this, this music is about God. And uh, I, most of the time though, weren't, wasn't thinking about God. I was thinking more about Daddy than I was thinking about God, and it really shouldn't be that way. But he, we were so close. He's basically my best friend. I've had a lot, of, and do have a lot of good mm -hmm. friends, but uh, spent more time with him than any of them, even, and closer to him mm -hmm. than, and and did everything you know to help me succeed in life. So most of the time, and that's not really right. And he would be the first one to tell me that. Most of the time, this project was a little bit more about honoring him than it was about honoring God. Mm -hmm. And so that's something I need to try to do better mm -hmm. on. Because uh, I thought when I was finished with this one, I'd be like, okay, now I'm done. But of course, I'm immediately thinking of other songs that, that weren't on here, that didn't make the cut for various mm -hmm. reasons. And so I'm not finished. I, I want to do some more. He was a, a person, though, his faith was very important to him. So to take up for you, thinking about him is almost, I mean, because he, he wrote the songs. He was, he was writing them about God. Mm -hmm. That's what the only songs he wrote were gospel songs and about his faith and how, how strong it was and his belief in God. So. And the Bible does say to honor your parents. Right. So there's nothing wrong with honoring no. your parents. I'm just saying that um, when I'm singing the songs and I'm listening to the songs, I should be thinking more about God than I am. I'm, yeah. I'm bad to think mostly about him. When it comes to the songs, there's actually 23 tracks on it, which is amazing, I think. And the first 18 are 
all the ones that Dad wrote? They're all original. They're all original. I, I wrote one of them. Okay, you wrote one about of them. him from okay. a dream that I had about him. Oh, is him. it? How, yeah, I forgot and about that. And then he yeah. wrote the other seventeen. Yeah. There was going to be uh, two more that he wrote, and I was working on them with Corey, and she's very busy, and we just never really got them right. So maybe they can be on the, maybe the next one. Maybe on the one. next one, yeah. So those of Daddy's and the one of yours, they span over what time frame? The first, the oldest song on there that he wrote is from about, is from 1964. I have that one pinned down pretty, real accurately. Some of them you just know a general uh, idea. And I think the last one is probably from about 2015. So ever how many years that, that would be. Right, and then yours would have been after yeah, yeah it, mine would have been 2017 or mm -hmm. 18 and even investigating as paul did this he would find out information uh, of course daddy told him about a lot of the songs and shared like he said shared stuff with him about uh, maybe where he wrote the song or paul helped him on some some of them helped because when you write a song usually you got to do a lot of fine tuning to it but then it was kind of interesting paul would find old um, pieces of paper where he'd wrote stuff down on, helped him kind of put the history of them, like mm -hmm. at least mark the date of when it might have been. Well, I know it was before this because I found it on this piece of paper. Right. Uh, and then also Daddy, because he was always in music, had along with the, the professional tapes or CDs, albums that he did, he also always, we had some kind of recording device, whether that was cassette tapes or the old reel-to-reels. So Paul really investigated through all of them too. And it was, you were almost going back in history mm -hmm. for a lot of them, felt like traveling back in time to try to put together what was going on and uh, what, you know, I always, all of Daddy's songs, I always, they're very inspiring to me as you might guess, but I always think about, you know, try to think, well, wonder what he was thinking about. Wonder what he was, what he was, you know, a lot of them are very, if you think about being troubled, inspiring to help you get over mm -hmm. your troubles through God, through mm -hmm. your belief, but I always wonder, well, wonder what he was feeling, wonder what he was, you know, so so that was part, that was really interesting for Paul to find those old, he wrote down a lot of stuff, Daddy did, and sometimes he wrote them on uh, the back of junk mail or mm -hmm. napkins or whatever he had handy. Mm -hmm. That part of it was a lot of fun too, d kind of digging back into things. Um, I wish, there's one song on there that, uh, and, and a lot of these songs, when I released them as singles, I made separate videos of, of sharing what I know about them uh, on the Blind Pig and the Acorn channel. So you can search for these song titles on that channel and you can find out as much background usually as I know about each one mm -hmm. that way. There's one on there, I, the one that's from 1964, and I know that from Granny. Granny told me, and I, I know she knows what she's talking about, that that was the first one that he ever wrote, and that he came home from work, having written it at work, and was very excited, and got the guitar out and sa sang it for her. And it's, Jesus, you kept me from falling today. Or, oh, Jesus, oh, how you helped me today. And that is one, and I, I've known that song my whole life. They didn't sing it much. Uh, almost never heard them sing it, but it was always one of my favorites. And that is one where I wish I had just specifically asked him. What happened? What, why did you write that song? Because it happened at work. He was driving, she said, for the Buckhorn Lumber Company, which is was in Murphy. It's no longer there. And I mentioned that to Josh Griggs, and Josh is actually playing on one of these songs. And he said, you just let that song be about what, about your, how mm -hmm. he helped you, you know. Yeah. You don't, and I said, okay, you know, but I'd just like to know. Yeah. And I, I commented, I think, in the liner notes there or in the video that maybe one day I can ask him, hey, what, what happened? Yeah. Because when I think about you helped me from falling, I first think about temptation. Like I almost slipped up mm -hmm. right there and did something really bad that would have fouled up my life. Uh, but then it says, help me through sorrow and pain. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't seem to be about temptation. So I do wonder, but um, I've, in my own song write, songwriting, which is not, you know, anywhere on his level, um, one thing I probably did was try to be too specific. One thing I've learned more recently, like through the music of the Avett Brothers and people like that, Bob Dylan, 
it's okay to leave some unanswered questions mm -hmm. in there and that actually makes it more relatable to, everyone, to everybody yeah. and it's not just about you so so maybe it is better that I don't know yeah. maybe Josh is right yeah maybe so the other then there's another little little part of the songs which is really just classic hymns and so you want to tell about them mm -hmm. and how many is there one two five. three four five yeah five of those five yeah. classic hymns those are songs that around that time which is i believe around 2005 or six he he just kind of kept working on those songs and he would sing them by himself at church at the community center and he would sing them when i was just sitting around and some of them like uh, i must tell jesus i just loved his arrangement and it would just really, I'm not a very emotional person, but when I'd hear him see those songs, it just really stir my emotions. You know, I might get goosebumps or I might get a little um, choked up. And so one day I came up to his house and, and we were eating breakfast and I said, what are you going to do today? And he said, nothing, you know. And I said, well, why don't you just come down to the house and let's record those songs. Mm -hmm. And so we did. And I honestly forgot about it. Um, because that had been over 10 years, you know, mm -hmm. earlier. and uh, But then not long after he passed, somewhere probably that same week, I remember remembered him. And you actually found the CD. Yeah, that Paul, I, once he remembered them, then he panicked. First, like, I, I can't like, find them. What if we recorded over them? What did we do with yeah. them, you know? But I said, no, you made copies. I have one. I have a copy. So. And I, when you brought that, yeah. I listened to it on a little boombox down at Granny's, and I just sat back and just closed my eyes. Yeah. I was just so happy that I still had those. Mm -hmm. And I know people are going to like them. And, and some people, honestly, that may be their favorite wow. part of the whole thing. Because when, when he was on The Blind Pig, that's what was the biggest draw. That's what people mm -hmm. liked the best was his singing. Um, I remember I played him for Wade Powell. Uh, the second Wade Powell the third and they were like wow never really heard Jerry sing lead mm -hmm. they really had they just didn't know it yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Ray did sing most of the lead yeah. uh, on that Words of Life album their first album they sounded so much like you couldn't hardly tell them apart mm -hmm. but uh, he was a good lead singer um, he was a better tenor singer it's hard to be perfect at <laughs> are really good at both because wow. it's it's very different type yeah. of singing but yeah. i'm real happy to have those on there and uh, they are classic hymns i probably should have just put hymns yeah. as the heading and not classic hymns but well but they are the ones some of the ones that people think about when they think about hymns and that's when we think of course pap's songs are really special and they are and he was a really talented songwriter but when you're talking about ray and daddy mostly doing covers mm -hmm. it's kind of like you said for musicians it's easier to do covers because that person whoever even if it's just a, a classic hymn you've heard at church you already know how it all goes you know mm -hmm. how all the music goes you know how mm -hmm. all of it goes you don't have to figure it out but then too it's relatable because then people can sit there and sing along with you they already right. know it so that's true people yeah, want to hear music that, that they, they know. already know and they and have a, a strong experience with right. it you know whatever and they can it is. sing along with and that's the hard part of being any kind of uh, musical artist is you've got to stick with your own stuff and do your own stuff enough until you achieve that. Right, yeah. Until they know it, them, yeah. you know. Uh, last night, this is kind of random, but last night I watched this video of Brian Adams go out at Wembley Stadium mm -hmm. and sing the summer of 69. And there's a lot of great feelings in the world, but I thought that's got to be one of the greatest feelings to go out there, start singing your song in front of that many people and every person there knows every single word mm -hmm. of your song and he wouldn't you know some artists would be like all right now y'all sing this he wouldn't yeah. even do that he would just stop the music and they wouldn't even miss they a beat just keep singing he could sing uh, three yeah. words and stop in the middle of a line and yeah. and quieten the music and they would just, just be keep going yeah mm -hmm. but at first of course nobody knows your no. music no. and so that's a good point too not only is it easier mm -hmm. arrangement wise but you're going to please your fans more easily yeah. if you do songs that right. they already know. True. So when it comes to the, I wanted to talk a little bit about the actual CD. Maybe we can, Paul can tell us the story about all the, the different little pieces of it. I'll get the liner out here. This front front photo there, I took that of Daddy and Paul. I was actually sitting behind them, I guess with my bass, and we were at uh, Don Carter 
Park. Was that the name of it? Don. 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 Yeah, Don Car Park in Gainesville, Georgia, and we were playing. Corey and Katie was there too somewhere, and I, I guess I was just sitting there while we were getting started or something. Decided to snap a picture, but I really like it. They're kind of both looking the same. They've got the same same expression on, uh, and Paul used it. And we didn't. You want to talk about? We didn't even tell you the name of the CD. It's Live to Never Die, which is a song title on there. And it was among the last songs that he wrote. Um, and it's funny because uh, sometimes people think if you choose a title track, you're choosing the song you think is the best or that people are going to like the best. That's not what I do anyway. Um, like Shepherd of My Soul, I didn't think that was the best, best song. song on that previous CD, but it made the best title or umbrella for all for the all songs. Them, yeah. So a lot of these songs are basically telling you, this is what you need to choose. You need to choose accepting Christ so that uh, you can live forever. Mm -hmm. I heard David Jeremiah say the other day, he said, um, I was born twice so I can just die once. Mm -hmm. But if you're only born once, you're going to die twice. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's pretty catchy. But that's why I chose that uh, title of the, of the whole album. It's like track 16 or something. I mean, it's way down the list. And it's one that I didn't get to sing with him. I just had to sing it by myself. It would have been better with him, with the harmony. But I feel like it was a good title for the other songs. There's kind of a, that theme throughout throughout the whole thing then on the on the back of it there's a there's another picture of them and that was actually at Blair's in Blairsville Georgia historic Union County courthouse and we played there many times over the years lots of daddy did even more than um, all of us together in the past and Paul's played there more too with daddy and Ray and all that but long history of making music there and I really like it because you can tell they're they've leaned they're leaning over to talk about I guess what they're going to do next. What do you want to do next? What do you yeah. want to do next? <laughs> what yeah. keys that in? Or what keys that in? Or yeah, yeah. Or should we do that now or wait or whatever? So or that's, I might be saying I'm just going to turn it around in the middle. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to play a some, full break or some something. sort of direction. So I, yeah. I really love that. And then on the end, Ron Priest took that picture, okay, by the way, okay. and he just recently sent that to me. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that's okay. Ron Priest took some good pictures of us up there, and we really appreciate him for doing that and always sending them to us. And uh, Granny even has one of them he made, like a little collage, collage. hanging in her living room. Uh, and then the inside, of course, you want to talk about it on the inside, the liner notes. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know if anybody will ever read that, but I put, actually had them put an arrow to show people to look inside the book yeah. because I had uh, all the lyrics on the Shepherd of My Soul, the lyrics to every one of the, his songs on there, I had them in a booklet. And then I would have people ask me to send them the lyrics, and they had the CD. And I'd say, well, just look in the little booklet. And they'd say, oh, I didn't know that was there. I didn't know it opened up. So I had an arrow pointing in there, but... Uh, I did not put the lyrics this time. I just put a little background information about the song title, like kind of when I think it was written, and did it appear? Had it ever been recorded before, or was this the first time ever? Mm. Anything else you want to say about the? There's uh, all the musicians are listed in okay. there, uh, you, so you can find that out. Who played what? What did I play? What did they play? Uh, then the photo credits are in there. Mm -hmm. This. Uh, the image on the disc there, uh, there's two songs on here that are about space, really, and how space directly illustrates uh, the, the creation of the, the Creator. And, of course, that's not Pap's original idea. It comes straight out of Psalms. It makes it clear that that is one of the strongest testaments to God is looking at the sun and, and things like that and how everything works in a system. Um, I cannot remember who, who did that image, but that's listed in the front of it. It was, I just saw it. Crystal Penny. Crystal Penny made that one, the kind of digital art. And when you pick up the CD, the same picture is behind it. Um, another fella made a really nice image. When you release the singles, you've got to have a little image or icon for each one. Mm -hmm. He made a really nice one that was also at night um, for Bright Shining Light which is one of the songs on the on the album and I started to use it behind that disc but it just didn't mm -hmm. didn't work out but it's a great image 
Um, and another thought that we both had, and I forgot about it, so maybe I can do it on the next project. Like you said, I have all these lyric sheets in his handwriting. I meant to use some photos of some of that as oh, a background, yeah. and this all this was so far along by the time I remembered it. So maybe I can do that mm -hmm. on the next one. Um, if you read my blog, Blind Pig and the Acorn, if you look at the top little header, the web website header there, if you see some writing up there, that's one of Pap's songs. <laughs> that's about there. Like um, we were saying, he would write on old junk mail and napkins and stuff, but sometimes he actually wrote on, on notebook, notebook paper, paper. yeah. Um, and the photo on the back, Paul wasn't real, he, he wants to, maybe in the future, if he could use it a different way, but we'll put a picture up here of the whole picture so you can see it. But it's a really nice picture of Pap standing there. It looks, in this one, kind of like he's on the CD, like he's looking at a bunch of cows, but there's actually a huge oak tree there, and this, the darkness they had to put so that the song titles showed up kind of obscures that. But that that picture has a really wonderful story. We didn't never know it existed. We'd never seen it, and, and we knew immediately when we did see it where the, it was the at. The picture, yeah. Yeah, the picture where it was at, where it was taken, but we didn't know that it existed. And Katie was working at the John C. Campbell Folk School in the archives down there, and she was going through with an archivist that was there uh, visiting, didn't stay long, but anyway, at the time, going through all their stuff, trying to organize it. In the process, Katie had to help her. She come across all these different pictures. Of course, she knew our family being from Brasstown, she knew she would likely see some stuff. She seen pictures of Paul and Daddy and Ray at Fall Festival, some of us at Fall Festival playing music or playing on the stage in the Keith house. But she sent, found this picture of Pap, and I was like, what is, what in the world? Why would it be in there? But then right with it, she found a picture of me, and then that told the, you know, made me remember. I just totally forgot about it. That years, uh, years ago, uh, there was a, a nice girl, Anna Shearhouse. She's now married. I think Curran, is that it? What, that's her name uh, now. That's what it says. Uh, but she was working in the, in their archives. And she got interested in the studying the architecture of houses in the in the Brasstown area, old houses. And so she asked me if I would ask Daddy if he would take us to a few of them and kind of talk about them. And so I did. And me and her and him went to several different places. And I just forgot about it. She had a camera and she took pictures. So she took that picture of Daddy and and just. I don't know, you know, didn't even think of, I had a camera with me, I took pictures that day, so she probably never even thought about giving me the picture or telling me about it or anything like that, but it ended up in the archives, and it was after Daddy had passed away that Katie found it, and we were just all, it's a really good picture, we were all just like over the moon about it, and I think I framed it and give it to Paul and mm -hmm. Granny and I Steve, I made sure they all had Steve one. Steve has his hanging in his house, yeah. and I have mine hanging in my house. So. It's a great picture. I did not know that that's how we... I thought somebody just sent it to us, no, maybe. Katie found it. That was they? lucky. Yeah. Some people might wonder, well, why would you put a picture where his face is turned away? But to me, and I'm not trying to get really deep, but right now it is turned away. That's that's yeah. not turned away in the sense of, like, um, not... I don't know how <laughs> all that stuff, you know, works. People will say, oh, your daddy's looking down on you or smiling. I don't... I don't know, and none of us really know how that works uh, until we're there. Yeah. But what I meant by turned away is, you know, right now we can't really we're not with him. engage yeah, with right. him um, directly and, like and, we would like to. And I love it because also he was a very, um, uh, he liked to laugh and have fun and tease. He was a little mischievous sometimes and all that. But he was also very serious about things like this CD talks about, about the Lord. He was very serious. So to me, he just looks like, in that photo, looks like he's deep in thought. Probably mm -hmm. the place he was standing and what he was looking at and me and Anna, you know, taking him around and asking him a million questions about all the old houses. And of course, he told us memories. He, he may have been deep in thought about his childhood too, looking back, you know, thinking about uh, people and places that were long since gone. Um, I will, we, we had 500 made and when we do the next run, I will ask them if they can lighten, lighten that, that where you can yeah. see that oak tree. That oak tree is gone now. Yeah. It had been there almost, well, all my life. Yeah. It was there till maybe six, seven years ago or something. It, it got 
Was it got struck by lightning or it was a little diseased or both? It, it was diseased. And they finally cut it down, but it was probably a good 300, 400 years old, yeah. I'd say. No, actually what happened to it, it blew down. Okay. Uh, and the reason I remember it so well is that um, Corey and Katie were having, I think it was Dance Musicians Week, again at the folk school, and they weren't driving yet, so that tells you how long ago it's been. I mean, but they were like teenagers or whatever. And I had to stop on my way home from work and pick them up. So I stopped at Davidson Hall over there and picked them up. And it was, it was while I was sitting in the car, it was storming and raining, but not like a severe, you know, not like the worst storm you ever seen, but a mm -hmm. summertime storm, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I got them and we come home. And as soon as we turned in off the main highway, I was like, what's, you know, you just immediately, you Something's know, something's different. different. But what, but it, the giant tree had fallen. Mm -hmm. And the amazing part was, because it was diseased on the insides, why it fell, it wasn't that it was that horrible of a storm, is that it just laid itself down right alongside the, on the fence, I guess, but alongside the old house that's there. Mm -hmm. It could have so easily fell on the house. It could have fell out in the road. It could have fell. It was a good you know, tree. Uh, <laughs> right yeah, to it the was, end. Uh, it was a good it tree a good, right till the end. Good yeah. tree good to tree have right in your to yard. The end. Yeah, but it was a beautiful old tree and, and was here long before any of us or Pap mm -hmm. and even Pap's father and all of them. So, yeah, a meaningful picture to us, though. Yeah, I do like that picture. Uh, another thing when we do a, a, a run, a second run, because I, I looked at proof after proof after proof after proof and email back and forth and it didn't take as long as it did with shepherd of my soul that took it seemed like forever there's just so many little things to correct but this probably three to four weeks of like emailing back and forth and only one mistake uh kind of got past the goalie and that is beyond this veil of tears it's the wrong veil uh, it's veil like you wear over your face yeah. and it's supposed to be veil like short for a valley yeah Either way, kind of works, yeah, <laughs> but uh, kind of, yeah. uh, so when we do a second run, I'll see if they can lighten that that and part over the that. oak and then yeah. correct that spelling. Yeah. So there'll so, be two different kinds out there in circulation. Yeah. So Paul, kind of, you kind of mentioned it, but we'll tell people. So a lot of people, of course, today don't like CDs as much because they went on to digital music. But so mm -hmm. it is available on. You can download almost every song uh, digitally. You can't download the hymns. I don't think. And there's one or two of the other songs that I just, and I might later get to it, but I haven't yeah. put but up we'll, there. We'll put those links down below too, so make it easier for you to find them if you're interested in that. I hope CDs don't go totally away. I, I watched uh, Y. Esplin, I hope I'm saying his name right, yeah. he's a local musician. Yeah. I watched him on Morning Song the other day, he did a great job, and he at the end of it he gave away his CDs and he said, now all you got to do is go find a CD player somewhere because <laughs> uh, they are getting scarce, yeah, you know. Yeah, cars aren't made with them anymore and yeah, everything's gone digital, but. Those downloads, uh, I'll, I'll get into some boring stuff, but they're not as good a quality as the CD itself. Um, and you talked a little bit about the recording quality. Once I retire, Lord willing, I'm going to try to um, get a much higher quality recording to begin with. And then once you come down to the lower quality of everything on the internet, it's pretty much MP4, mm -hmm. which it, it probably sounds great to you, like when you're listening to professional um, artists, you know, that uh, big labels mm -hmm. made. probably sounds great to you, but MP4 is actually really low quality. It's, yeah. But it's because they started with such pristine perfect quality and then came down to that mm -hmm. whereas I only started a couple of qualities so to speak above that and came down to mm -hmm. it it's not as good as I would like like for the recording quality to be it's probably similar to um, a lot of mark when I was still in marketing a lot of people and I would take classes and things they talk about the fact that um, of course like for your business or whatever you want your videos to be good you know mm -hmm. but you got to have a starting place and how in today's world so many people do videos with their phone and stuff that we've kind of like you were saying uh, used to maybe there was the standard was way up here and because mm -hmm. of that now it can be a video that's that's a little shaky, wobbly yeah. and shaky and people still it, it ends up going viral and mm -hmm. you know and making whatever that's what uh, most people listen to music on. right now, I, so I, the I, difference. I do if that's all I have but if I'm going yeah. down the road I listen to my 
stereo if i'm in my mm -hmm. house and i'm going to listen to music i'm really serious serious about yeah. i'll listen to it on a stereo but um we made one album in hayesville north carolina with a, a really good recording engineer his name was steve snowden and i learned a lot of things from steve and one thing that he did that i did not do with this because honestly i was just too lazy but when he would make a mix he would go and listen to it in a bunch of different systems. Mm. He might listen to it in his car. He might listen to it on a little boom box. He might listen to it on his phone. Go listen to it on a great big stereo. And then he would tweak it because it might sound great on that car stereo but terrible on that phone or boom box. And he would just keep tweaking and dialing and things it, in. the best on all of them. Until it was somewhere in the middle mm. to where it didn't like sound super great on one thing and then bad on yeah. another. I, I pretty much tuned everything or mixed everything to a 2010 Tacoma pickup. <laughs> so if you if you drive a Toyota, this CD will probably sound its best in your system. If you drive yeah. a Ford or a Chevy or you listen to it on your phone, it's not going to sound yeah. as good as it does in my yeah. truck. When I listen to stuff on the phone, like I listened to one the other day, I listened to uh, I'm Not the Servant That I Should Be, and it didn't sound b bad but it sounded totally different. Mm -hmm. It sounded like my voice, the lead vocal, was way out in front of everything and the music was just kind mm -hmm. of in the background. Mm -hmm. And that's what Steve was aware of is, you you would think, if you're not a recording engineer, you would think everything plays it the same, but it doesn't. It's all, oh, yeah. everything has its, its own, own EQ yeah. and yeah. all that. Mm -hmm. Well, we hope you enjoyed hearing about this long, long time project and how we're excited that it's finally, finally finished. We hope that you're excited about it. Hope if you pick up a CD, you'll really love it. And Paul's greatest desire and mine too is just that these songs would be out there. Not that we, we don't want to be rich. We don't want Pap's name to be rich, anything like that. But sometimes people tell us, you know, I sung, now my church sings that. That's what makes us happy. Now my... You know, my uncle and aunt, they go around and play for nursing homes and stuff, and they've been playing Pap's song. That's what we love to hear, mm -hmm. just for those songs to be out there living um, among people, and they can enjoy them and share them with other people. That's That was what Pap wanted. Uh, he didn't ever plan to get rich or to have his name up in lights or anything like that. But it was just to it, really to spread the gospel. That was a way of doing it through his music. So so we're thrilled if it's that you listen to it or even more thrilled if you decide to learn it and sing it, sing it at your church or in your home or wherever you want to. And we'll mm -hmm. put the all those links that we mentioned, we'll be sure to put them in the description below, including the place where you can pick up your copy. If you are a musician and you want to learn any of these songs, if you can't learn it from the CD or you have any question about the chords or lyrics, just email me. My email address is in the mm -hmm. uh, liner notes, and I'll be glad to tell you the chords or the lyrics or help you in any way. As always, we're glad you stopped by to help us celebrate Appalachia. And for me and Paul, growing up here in the mountains with our father, Pap, this is certainly something worthy of celebrating for us, and we hope it is for you, too. Is that a thumbnail? Yeah. Thumbnail. You don't want me to go... <sighs> <laughs> you can. Yeah. Any of those stuff that people do. <laughs> yeah, the people. it actually works. It so. does. But okay, so you can do that. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but people that uh, have a channel yeah. and they do...